And let me um, thank the distinguished senator from Michigan for her uh, eloquent words um, that try to bring into this uh, institution some of the difficulty and anxiety and pain that families in our states particularly are feeling because while the national unemployment rate is at an atrocious above 9%, in our states it's considerably worse. In Rhode Island, the unemployment rate hovers still around 12%. And, um, and this has been a prolonged, prolonged recession. So for many Rhode Islanders, they have been out of work for as long as unemployment insurance benefits allow. And now they're coming to the end of the 99-week uh, period that they're allowed to recover. And the simple, plain, unvarnished fact is that the jobs just aren't there. And so in a different economy, uh, I might be less impatient with the argument that you have to cut off unemployment benefits on folks because, frankly, after a while they get lazy. And if you don't cut off the benefits, then they'll just, you know, wait around collecting their unemployment, goofing off, and not going back to work. That's the argument that I hear made against this all too often. And when you're in a state where the jobs simply are not there, where the economy has not come close to recovering, then it just, it's not logical, and it's heartless, and it's wrong. Um, there are now more than 65,000 Rhode Islanders out looking for work. By contrast, the economic recovery bill created 11,000 jobs in Rhode Island. It would be far worse were it not for the action that we took. But when you compare 11,000 families who now have jobs and paychecks because of the Recovery Act to the 65,000 who are still wondering, when is this economy coming back for me? Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. And to extend unemployment benefits for those who've run it through, I think, is, is the least that we can do. I remember visiting uh, Network Rhode Island, which is the job placement agency in Pawtucket, Rhode Island not too long ago and speaking to a married couple, nice middle-aged married couple who'd worked all their lives, sitting side by side at one of the computer screens, going through the job openings looking for something. They come in every day to look to see what's available. They filed hundreds of applications for jobs. They've been unable to find anything because of the job market in Rhode Island. And they said, you know, we're, we're really anxious. We're running out of our benefits. And this was one of those occasions when the Republicans had filibustered extending unemployment benefits uh, and uh, adding additional uh, funding. And I assured them that when we got back, we would be restoring those benefits and we would be protecting them because we had that uh, commitment and we had that determination. And they said, no, 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 I'm, <laughs> you can't help us. We're the, we're, we're in the, 90, we're the 99ers. Uh, we've come to the uh, end of the duration for which you're allowed to collect unemployment benefits. And uh, I felt very helpless uh, that there was nothing we were doing for them. And Senator Stabenow and I discussed this problem, and she filed this wonderful legislation, uh, which I was an immediate uh, co-sponsor of. And it addresses a problem that, at least in our states, is very very real. Um, two of the Rhode Islanders who've written in to us and have contacted me about this have let me use their images, just so we're not always talking about heartless, bloodless statistics here on the floor, you know, 12%, 65,000. There are real people behind those statistics. There are real families. There are those terrible late nights at the kitchen table trying to figure out how you keep the house, how you keep the mortgage, how you keep the health insurance, what you cut, what you give up. And those are discussions that are happening by 
being had by real, real families. This is Michael Coppola. He lives in Smithfield, Rhode Island. He was a truck driver for the same company from 2000 to 2007. And uh, he was laid off in October of 2008 when his unit closed down. This month, Michael hits the current 99-week limit for unemployment insurance benefits. He uh, has had to give up his health insurance. Uh, he's trying to keep up with his mortgage payments so he doesn't lose his house and add to the tide of foreclosures that are sweeping across Rhode Island and the rest of the country. His wife is totally disabled, and as a result, she receives some Social Security benefits, and that's helping them keep the family together. But he wrote me to say any extension of benefits for people like me who have exhausted their benefits would help allow me to stay in my house, pay my taxes, and allow me to regain my health coverage. Michael actually took this picture just for us so that we could have a picture here to show on the floor of the Senate and uh, put a human face on this problem uh, that is so often drowned in statistics. Here's another Rhode Islander from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. This is Nancy Babcock. Nancy is 59 years old, and uh, she lost her job about 24 months ago. She had worked for 15 years, steadily, in the insurance industry. And next week, she hits her 99-week limit. She's been able to find a little bit of part-time work, but it has not been enough to pay her bills and keep her finances afloat. Rhode Island's work share program has permitted her to supplement her unemployment insurance benefits with a small amount of part-time income. This is a woman who has worked essentially all her life, who while on unemployment insurance has tried to find what work she was, she could find and permitted uh, and has continued to look for work. She has a bachelor's degree. She has several industry certifications. She has extensive background in sales and marketing. And despite the long drought of unemployment that she's had to live through, that so many Rhode Islanders have had to live through, she's still out there plugging every day looking for work, hoping for this terrible economy to turn for her. She's been going through the classifieds. She's been beating her feet against the pavement, trying to get to uh, places where she might get an interview. She's been reaching out to friends. She's been doing all the things families do in this circumstance, trying to reach out wherever she can, and still, uh, after 99 weeks, to no avail. So I want to um, thank Senator Stabenow for her leadership on this. In a better world, this would be an easy thing. And the unanimous consent to allow us to go to this bill and extend these unemployment insurance benefits would be uncontroversial. Um, it should be clear to anybody that these people have lost their jobs and have been out of work for this uh, lengthy period through no fault of their own. Michael wasn't fired for cause. Nancy didn't lose her job because she did something wrong. The people who did something wrong were in Wall Street, were at the Securities and Exchange Commission, were creating these phony baloney securitization of home mortgages, and most of them got bailed out. The banks are back rolling, firing off the big bonuses, reporting huge earnings, not loaning much money yet, but taking care of their folks, rolling in the paychecks and the bonus checks, and they're back on their feet again. But for the people who got clobbered by the tsunami of economic catastrophe that the Wall Street implosion and the housing implosion set off, they're still being washed around. Nobody's bailed them out. Let's extend the unemployment insurance that they've been contributing to, that they're a part of. Let's help uh, our fellow Americans weather this unique financial storm. And uh, I'll now yield the floor so that Senator Stabenow can uh, make her procedural motion. I appreciate very much her leadership on this.